Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in medicine for study and rapid review. This video is on glomerular filtration. Each kidney has millions of nephrons. Each nephron has a glomerulus, a proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct. Blood flows through the afferent arteriole into a tuft of capillaries, and that's the glomerulus. It exits via the efferent arteriole. The plasma gets filtered through the glomerulus to form the glomerular filtrate, which then passes through the rest of the nephron where processes like reabsorption and secretion happen, followed by excretion. The filter, when magnified, has three layers. Because it's a capillary, it has endothelial cells and a thin basement membrane. The endothelial cells are fenestrated, so they have spaces. The visceral layer of Bowman's capsule which surrounds the glomerulus has specialized cells called podocytes, and these podocytes have foot processes. The foot processes interdigitate, creating slit clefts, so solutes can pass through the spaces. So obviously there's a size restriction. Only substances that can fit through these spaces can pass, but also it's a charge barrier. All three layers are negatively charged, so even if a substance is small enough to pass through like albumin, if it's negatively charged, it will get repulsed and hence can't pass through. Thus, the glomerular filtrate is normally free of plasma proteins. The rate at which substances get filtered through the glomerulus is the glomerular filtration rate, or the GFR. The GFR is dependent on the renal plasma flow. More the plasma that flows through the glomerulus, more the GFR. The fraction of plasma that gets filtered is called a filtration fraction. This is given by the ratio of the GFR to the RPF. It's usually 0.2 or 20%. This means that 20% of the renal plasma gets filtered through the glomerulus. The glomerulus is a set of capillaries, so the forces that determine the fluid movement are starling forces. For better understanding of starling forces, you can check out my video linked in the description box below. There are four starling forces. The hydrostatic pressure on either side, so in the glomerulus, is Pg, and in the Bowman space is Pb. The colloid osmotic or oncotic pressure in the glomerulus is pi g, and in the Bowman space is pi b. Pg is hydrostatic, and it comes from fluid pressure, so it encourages filtration and we're going to put a positive sign next to that. Pb from the other side opposes filtration, so we'll put a negative sign there. The colloid osmotic pressures are from proteins. Proteins pull fluid towards them, so pi g opposes filtration and is negative, while pi b encourages it, so it's positive. But since proteins can't cross the barrier, pi b would be negligible because there's no proteins in the filtrate. This whole thing together is called a net filtration pressure. The most important force driving filtration is Pg. The hydrostatic pressure in the glomerulus is altered by changes in the pressure and resistance of the afferent and efferent arterioles. So if the Pg reduces, the GFR reduces. Another factor that determines GFR is the Kf, or the filtration coefficient. This is the hydraulic conductivity of the barrier. It includes things like surface area and thickness of the basement membrane for permeability. So the GFR is the product of Kf and the net filtration pressure. Higher the Kf, higher the GFR. The renal blood flow and the GFR are autoregulated over a wide range of pressure changes from 75 to 180 millimeters of mercury. So pressure changes in this range alter the GFR in very minute amounts. The RBF is regulated by two mechanisms. The myogenic mechanism, where the blood vessel resists stretching in increased pressure, so it maintains a constant renal blood flow, and the tubuloglomerular feedback. This feedback is by the juxtaglomerular apparatus, which includes three things, the macula densa of the early distal tubule, the extraglomerular mesangial cells, and the juxtaglomerular cells of the afferent arteriole. 
The macula densa senses fluoride and the changes in the sodium chloride concentration in the early distal tubule. If it senses a low sodium chloride concentration, it stimulates the JG cells to produce renin. Renin converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1, and by the angiotensin converting enzyme, angiotensin 2 is formed, which constricts the efferent arterial and reduces the renal plasma flow, but increases the GFR by increasing the hydrostatic pressure in the glomerulus. If it senses a high sodium chloride concentration, it directly acts on the afferent arterial and constricts it, so it reduces the renal plasma flow and hence the GFR. The GFR can be measured by measuring clearance. And you can check out my video on clearance that I've linked in the description box below. Clearance is the rate at which a substance is cleared from the plasma per unit time. It's given by the urine concentration of a substance into the urine fluoride over the plasma concentration of that substance. For GFR, we need a substance that gets freely filtered, but neither reabsorbed nor secreted. And that substance is inulin. So GFR is the clearance of inulin. But inulin isn't produced in our body, so it has to be administered. Creatinine, therefore, is an effective substitute. Even though a small amount does get secreted into the tubules, creatinine clearance can be used to measure GFR. As the GFR reduces, the creatinine clearance reduces, and hence the plasma creatinine rises. The GFR can be measured from the serum creatinine by the cockcroft gold formula. That's 140 minus the age into weight in kilograms over the serum creatinine into 72. That's for males. And this whole thing multiplied by 0.85 is for females. And that's the glomerular filtration. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.